Hello, this is Joshua, and welcome back to Inside the Music, or welcome to Inside the Music if this is your first time. So, we're already on lesson five. We're nearly at the end of our musical journey of understanding the tenor horn. And throughout these lessons, we've gone over many different kind of key elements within the tenor horn and some just key elements within music itself. So for the tenor horn, we've looked at how to play the instrument, how it was held, for example, and just some of the really key features on the instrument itself and how important they are in creating the sounds that are created by the instrument. So the mouthpiece, for example, is a really important part, as well as the valves. They work together to create the, the notes that we hear, for example, and it creates different sounds, and we're able to use that to play pieces of music, which are very expressive. And when we looked at that, we spent a little bit of time just kind of understanding it, and taking a little bit of time just to practice it as well, so we were feeling more comfortable and feeling a lot less stress-free, as I would say. Because um, it's really difficult, it was something that was really challenging, I felt, and something that was not exactly easy to pick up the very first time. So we went over it a little bit for the second time, and it went really well. I went over some key elements, some different sounds, and different ways you play the notes. On top of that, we then looked at some theory as well, which um, I think is very important for understanding some of the elements we're looking at throughout these lessons when it comes to note names, note letters, and just the kind of sounds um, that are produced, for example. If we speak about it theory-wise, we then understand maybe why some of these sounds are created or how they're actually made. Uh, and then also we then decided to go over some notes for the tenor horn. So we looked over C, D, E, F, G, A and B and we went up to top C and back down again. And those were just some of the notes that we can learn on the tenor horn, but a good selection of notes as it can build up a scale, for example, as that is technically the C major scale. Um, and we looked over a few of those notes and we just kind of practiced them. We wrote down the different uh, vowel positions for them and we then go away and practice them as many times as we like, revisit those videos as many times as we like and just continue practicing and building upon our confidence and skills. In today's lesson, we're going to develop our notes further that we've learned. So obviously we learned all of those notes, we learned C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. But today I'm going to introduce you to some sharps and flats, which is very exciting. Because sharps and flats can be very important in changing how a piece of music sounds. And they're also a really important part of creating key signatures, for example, and having different scales and major and minor scales as those are built up from sharp and flat key signatures. So we're going to have a quick look into some sharp and flat notes. We're not going to look at too many. There are, every note in music can be sharpened or flattened, but what I would like to do is just take a couple of those notes that would be a little bit easier to understand and just spend a little bit of time playing those how they, and listening to how they sound, how they're actually created and why it's created the way it is. So uh, maybe using a keyboard, for example, and explaining how a sharp's actually made or how a flat's actually made, and then how they sound, for example, the tenor horn. So that's gonna kind of be the goals for today and allow you to take some notes on different sharp and flat notes as well. And it will just build up our range of understanding of the tenor horn as well, because we can use those notes to play the tenor horn and some pieces of music you may encounter in the future may ask you to play a sharp or flat, or it could be a key signature as well, which of course we will look over soon. But for today's lesson, our first thing we're going to be looking at is we're just going to be having a quick discussion of sharps and flats, of course, and we're going to use some terms uh, that are known as intervals, tones, and semitones. And those are ways of kind of describing how a note is moving and how it sounds as well. So... For example, a tone is like the distance between, it can be a distance, it's almost like a distance of notes. Like intervals are the distance between notes. And sometimes it could be a step or it could be a leap. And we'll go over what those all mean and we'll spend just roughly like five minutes or something going over that. And then what we're then going to do um, after that is we're going to look at some sharps. So we're going to look at two sharps today and we're going to look at F sharp and C sharp. Uh, and what we'll do is I'm going to just give you the valve positions for those, I'll play them, uh, I'll put them side by side of other notes and you'll get to kind of hear the difference as well because I think that's the important thing is making sure that you can hear it 
and play it as well, which is great. But hearing the difference is very important, I'd say, and it allows you to kind of understand the, no the, the noise that's actually being made and the note that's being played. And finally, we'll be doing the same again, but this time we'll be looking at flats. So again, put it side by side of other notes, we'll play a flat, we'll play the normal note, and we'll kind of see how it sounds and how effective it can actually be in music and why sometimes sharps and flats are really important. But other than that, that is what we're going to cover for today's lesson. It's going to be a relatively short one, which is meaning it's not going to be too um, draining, I guess, or it's not going to require as much focus because some of the lessons have been quite long and they've required a lot of attention, whereas these ones can be, this one will be nice and short and sweet, uh, allowing us to kind of just get through it easily and not to cause too much stress or exhaustion, as I guess we could say. So without further ado, let's get straight into things then. So our first discussion is going to be the sharps and flats. So what is a sharp and flat? So and how do they look? That's a good question. So if I get this book, of course, it's one of my favourite books. It's The First Steps in Music Theory. It's a very useful book if you haven't gotten it already. And it shows some really good things. And it's got a page on sharps and flats. And we'll get to see exactly how they look. So if I show this very quickly as such, you can kind of see here the diagram that we see. And if you have a quick look at it, it kind of shows us some sharps and flats. It shows what they look like. So a sharp is a hashtag equivalent pretty much and a flat is almost like a B kind of rounded like that instead of going like that you just kind of round it as such and as you can see here in the book um, and those are different symbols these are symbols that can be written next to the notes for example and the eight it indicates to the musician playing and reading it that that note is a sharp or that note is a flat and sometimes the key signature will also tell you that, which means it does not need to be written next to the note. It's more of a mental thing where you read a key signature and you know which notes you're going to be sharpening and flattened straight away. But obviously, of course, if you've not really encountered that, that might take a little bit of time. And of course, it does take time uh, where you will look at sharps and flats and a key signature and then you realise oh, that's already sharpened in the piece of music. It doesn't have to be, doesn't, doesn't have to be the sharp symbol written next to it or the flat symbol. And we'll understand that and we'll go over key signatures soon uh, and we'll kind of get to look at that a bit further and maybe see it in a piece of music, for example, and how that affects it. Intervals, tones and semitones. So an interval is the distance between a note. So we can say from the note C, to E, that's an interval, but what is that interval? It's a third, because it's the third note. So you've got the first is C, the second note is D, the third note is E, and that's the interval between them. So that would be, for example, it'd be a third, there'd be a third apart, and to reach that note, you kind of go up the keyboard, for example, if you can imagine it, and that would go up in tones and semitones. So a tone in music is when you travel the distance of two steps, so if we look at the notes C and D, for example, and, and I'll show you very quickly, you can see there, you've got the note C, C sharp, and D. Uh, C sharp, why, why, why is that there? Because if you are to, to raise C by a semitone, um, it would then go to C sharp. When you raise something, you're sharpening it. And again, if you are to lower it, you're flattening it. And that's how a sharp and flat is created in music. If you look at any note, and you want to raise that, you will be sharpening it. So if you sharpen a note, you've raised it by a semitone, as it's called. And a semitone is moving up one step. A tone is moving up two steps. So if we look at C and D, if you have C, C sharp, then D, if you want to get to D, you have to go two steps. You have to go C sharp, D, to get to that. And that's kind of how sharps and flats work and that's how they sit. So if you look at the keyboard, for example, the white notes are your normal notes. So that's like your C, D, E, F, G. Your black notes are your C sharp, your D sharp, your E flats and B flats, for example. That's what those are and that's what they represent. It's almost that middle pitch between your two notes. So obviously you've got C and D. Your middle pitch could be C flat or D flat, depending on where you sit and where, whether you're raising or lowering. If you're to raise C, 
you go up to C sharp. If you're to lower D, you go to D flat. They're both the same. No, they both sound the same, but they're just written differently. And that's something called enharmonic, which is when two notes are written, you know, you've got two note names, so C sharp, D flat, but they sound the exact same. So they would both meet. So C sharp, C to C sharp, D to D flat. They come together at their exact same note, just a different name. And that's what that means. It's a bit of a more uh, higher grade term in terms of theory, but I just wanted to point it out as something you can maybe mentally note down or you can jot down, or maybe if it comes up again in the future, you have a brief idea or a very small idea. So without further ado, let's actually get the tenor horn out and let's practice and play some of these notes. So we're going to look at the sharps to start with and we'll then you know, spend just five minutes or so or, or a couple of minutes, I'd say, on each and explain it really briefly. So F sharp, um, to play F sharp, it is the second valve. So obviously F is just the first, but F sharp is the second valve. And what we'll do is I'm going to play F and I'm going to play G. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to play F sharp, then G. And hopefully you'll hear the difference, but then also I'll then go up and down between them. So I'll do F and G, and then I'll do the next one after. And then F sharp. You can almost hear that kind of increase in pitch and sound. So if I do them to side by side, you'll hear the raise raising of the F to F sharp and going back down to F natural, as it would be called. And there you go. The reason why I also call the F natural, for example, if you sharpen a note, so if I sharpen F and it goes to F sharp, if I then want to play F, I can't just write F, as we've already sharpened in that segment, that bar, as we would say, for example, you would then have to put a little natural sign down. And a natural sign uh, almost looks like a little lightning bolt, for example. I'll have a quick thing here um, where you can see it. And you can just see there, that's what it looks like. It's a very short little symbol that goes next to the note if you just want to play it as its natural form. And that was F sharp. So F sharp is second valve, just for a quick thought. And we'll move on to C sharp really quickly. So what we'll do is we'll do lower C and we'll do upper C as well because we've played both of them before. So starting with the lower C or middle C, um, to play that it requires all three valves. So it's one of the first notes um, that we've learned that requires all three valve positions to be used. And what we'll do again is I'll play C going up to D, then I'm going to play C sharp up to D. And I can almost do a little segment as well. So I'll do a few examples of style and hopefully you'll hear it. So this is C to D. Okay. And then let's do C sharp really quickly. And hopefully you'll hear that difference. You can kind of hear, you can almost hear it. You can hear the change in the notes as well. So you can kind of almost figure it out. If you listen, you're like, oh, that note's been sharpened, for example, or it could be lowered. But what I'll do is I'll play C, C sharp, D, and then go back down. And you can hear the raising and the lowering of the notes as well. There you go. So that's how it sounds on the tenor horn, and again, that's how those notes sound. And you can, they can be really, they can be really effective in terms of uh, in some music and making it more expressive. Uh, they're really important, I'd say, and also it creates your key signatures. So to finish off with sharps, we'll do upper C now. So as upper C is also open, I suck. But to do C sharp higher, it actually requires valves one and two, not all three, as it's higher and it requires a different airflow to create that sound instead of it needing all three for the lower end of the instrument, I guess. So what we'll do is I'll play C to D and then I'll play C sharp to D. And uh, D higher is valve one, just in case you want to write it down. Uh, but yeah, I'll play that for you really quickly. And then 
and C sharp. And then I'll do all three together. You can almost hear that almost dissonant, or it's like that kind of, you can hear the semitones as we said, so you can hear the steps, you can hear the notes moving up almost like the staircase. It's going up the stairs and then coming back down the stairs again. Whereas if it's a tone and you're going and you're leaping, you're almost jumping across. You can almost say you're jumping up the steps, for example, as like a, uh, just a mental thought. Um, but that's how a sharp works it's raising the note and you can hear the note being raised you can hear for example that c going to c sharp you can hear the difference in the pitch and how it's almost a new note itself uh, and those can be really effective in creating music for example and finally we'll move quickly on to some flats so we're only going to look at b flat and e flat and like i said a flat lowers the pitch by a semitone so it's almost going down the stairs instead instead of walking up them you're going to walk down them and then walk back up for example for our um practice so um what we'll do is we'll just do upper b as that's kind of the only one we've learned and middle like for b it requires first valve sorry second valve um but b flat requires first valve is where i'm getting confused so b is second valve and then b flat is your first valve. If I play B going down to A and then I'll do B flat to A. So we we'll here. And then B flat, which is your first. And then together, so we'll start B, B flat, A. I think with that you can hear it clearly you can hear that descending pattern you can hear the semitones moving down you can hear the lowering of the b to b flat but then when we when we play going back up you can hear b flat not naturally going back to b as it? So it would be b, b natural um, and again some key signatures might have b flat it does sound dissonant but I promise you, when you have the key signature and you play it in a piece, for example, it would sound a lot nicer, I think, for example. But if I, I think in this instance, it sounds almost wrong and it sounds a bit off-putting. But if you play it in a, a piece of music, for example, with the key signature, it does sound a lot better. And it can be really effective in, you know, creating some really lovely pieces of music. And finally, we're going to move on to E flat and E as we learned before, was valves 1 and 2. To play E flat, it is valves 2 and 3. Um, again, 1 and 2 for E, 2 and 3 for E flat. If I play E to D, and then I'll do E flat to D, and then what I'll do is I'll then do a little segment as we've been doing. So I'll do this really quickly. And E flat. Then E flat, or E, E flat, and D. And there we go. That is E flat. And we can kind of hear the difference in those notes. And you can kind of hear those new sounds being created. And they're almost like new notes in themselves. Where you have, like, for example, you have C and D and E. But then you also then have... C sharp, D sharp, and let's just say E flat, for example. They're all different sounds that all are incredibly effective. And it's really, really important using them. And I think, like, of course, you don't have to use them. But sometimes using them can be really effective, again, in, like, a piece of music, as I keep referring to. As some of, like, you know, the best-known pieces of music out there in the world, a lot of them will have sharps and flats in them. Some of them might not at all. Some of them might be completely free of sharps and flats. They'll just be all the white notes, as we learned um, in our previous lesson. But, of course, I think knowing your sharps and flats is incredibly important as well. I think today 
I just wanted to show that to you, introduce it to you, and give you a taster of what sharks and flats are. And of course, there are more sharks and flat, but for what we're doing in our little journey here of understanding the tenor horn, I wanted to show you those four notes, those two sharks and two flat notes. And that is concludes today's lesson. So that was what I wanted to go over today, it was just the two sharps and the two flats and just explaining it a little bit so that you understand how a sharp and flat works and how sharpening something is when you raise it and flattening something is when you lower it. And those are very important to remember and they're really good to keep in mind. You're almost going up and remember when you're raising something and sharpening it, you're going up a semitone. Semitone is one step and as for reference, if you've got like your keyboard, you've got C, C sharp, D. If you want to go to C to D, that requires two steps, that requires a pull. So you go C sharp, D, and that's two steps. If you wanted to just go to C sharp, you just go from C to C sharp, and that is one step, so it's a semitone. So as a little note, a semitone is one step, a tone is two steps, and that's kind of how you want to imagine what a tone and a semitone does. And like when you move up the, the piano, for example, you'll have your tones, your tones, and sometimes you have your semitone. Because for example, E and F, there's not an E sharp or an F flat. There's just E and F. It's the same with B and C. So those are the only two notes that have no black note in the middle, as we could say, as like a little middle ground. They just sit right next to each other. But I hope that was informative, and I hope it was really useful to learn. Um, I think it's, it's really good to know some sharps and flats and being able to understand them. And of course you can go away and practice them, play them as many times as you like and hopefully you've managed to jot them down and you can go away and practice them and understand them. Uh, and also hopefully you were just able to hear it musically, the difference in a sharp note and a natural note or a flattened note and a natural note. You can hear the distinctive difference when you're moving down or if you're raising, so if you're going up or if you're going down or if you're going back up or going back down. And I think it's really important to know and hear. So hopefully that was really useful for you and for you to be able to understand and being able to just kind of put it into perspectives and play it on the tenor one as well. It's also something really useful, I think. But without further ado, I think we can call it there for today's lesson. I hope um, it went well, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I hope to see you again really soon for the last lesson of Understand the Tenor Horn, as that will be the finale of our musical journey. So I hope to see you there. But without that, I've been Joshua, and this has been Inside the Music. I hope you have a lovely day. Goodbye for now.